Let's dive into how we can value a futures contract. And I'm going to be looking at a futures contract on the commodity of gold. And we're gonna be using real prices in the market right now from CME's website. And let's just dive into it in Excel. So what we're looking at here is the price of gold right now. And so this is going to be, for me, it's December of 2023 hello from the past. So this is how much I can buy an ounce of gold for right now. And then this right here would represent if I wanted to buy a futures contract one month in the future. So January of 2024 is one month in the future for me. I can basically agree to pay a price of $2,039.80 per ounce of gold. And the contract would be on a basis of 100 ounces of gold. And then we can see how these prices change as we go into the future. And I'll show you right here that I'm actually using the real settlements. So I'm on CME Group's website. I'm on the gold futures uh, contract. And I'm looking at, so let's say for January, I'm looking at the last price for January of 2024. And that's uh, $2,041.30. So if we jump back here, it looks like it has just changed a little bit since I've typed it in. You know, one thing you can do is CME Direct actually has an Excel add-in which allows you to pull in these prices live. And I've used this quite a bit for one of my clients and it's a really awesome Excel API. I didn't wanna use it here because I know not everybody has access to that. So we'll see that these contract prices keep going up into the future. And what this is called is actually uh, contango. So when that futures curve for a commodity is upward sloping, as we see here, that's called contango. And a few things that can drive contango as to why people expect the price of a commodity to go up into the future or, or the futures price to keep increasing as the contract goes further out into the future is storage costs. So if I buy this contract, someone's going to have to store the commodity on my behalf which there's some cost to that. There's also interest rates. So there could be some expectation that this asset that is the commodity should appreciate in value over time. And there also might be supply and demand expectations that impact how people are thinking this commodity is gonna be priced into the future. Now, one thing I wanna do is think about, so let's say if today in December of 2023, we decided to go long, so we purchased a futures contract that expires in December of 2024. So we're looking at buying a futures contract for this price of $2,134.20. So we'll just set our forward delivery price K equal to that value. This will never change. It will remain the same the entire duration of this contract. Now what we want to do is find the futures value. If let's say we move into the future so we go three months forward and all these prices change. How would we come up with this value? Let's find out. One important thing to keep in mind is that when we initiated the contract in December of 2023 and we agreed to buy 100 ounces of gold at this price a year in the future, in December of 2024, the value of that contract was $0 to both myself and the party on the other side of the contract. Now we have gone forward three months ahead and now it is March of 2024. And we notice these prices in the market. And so what I've done here is I've just taken the price that it used to be and added 100 to it. So I've assumed that at each one of these uh, different futures points in the future, the price is just now expected to be $100 more than what we were expecting three months ago. And you can see this reflected over here on this graph that now we've seen an upward shift. So an upward parallel shift in this futures curve, it's still in contango. One thing that I do want to point out is that see how I've denoted these futures contracts. So this is in John Hall's famous derivatives book. So this F01 always indicates how many months into the future this contract is. So back when we were in December of 2023, up here, this, this point in April was actually four months into the future, so it is F04. Now that we've gone three months ahead, this uh, April 
And now that we're in March of 2024, this month of April is only one month into the future. And so the contract that we're really interested in, when we initiated it back here, it was 12 months into the future. Now it's only nine months into the future. And so this is really the price that we're concerned with. So we agreed to buy 100 ounces of gold for $2,134.20 per ounce. And now that we're three months into the future, the expected futures price of gold as priced on CME is now $2,234.02. So it's gone up $100. So that means as the long in the futures contract, we're doing well, we should be up in value. When the price goes up and we're long, that is good for us and it hurts the other side of the contract. So let's value this futures contract using this formula right here. So our futures value of F is going to be equal to the futures price. So that's the new price, this one right here, so minus the forward delivery price. So this is the price that we agreed to pay right here. So this, if we just stopped right there, that would tell us that when this contract is up, we should be winning by basically $100 because the price of a gold ounce and the futures rate went up $100. However, this is actually nine months into the future. So we have to take the present value of that nine months into the future cash flow that we're expecting and bring it back to today. And we can do that using the risk-free rate. Now, I'm just using an assumption of 4% because that's roughly what the 10-year treasury is around the time that I'm making this video, I believe. So I'm going to continue this formula. So we'll multiply it by E. So we can use EXP in Excel two times the negative risk-free rate of 4% multiplied by, and so this is T. So this is the time into the future of this cash flow, which is going to be nine months. So nine months out of 12 months in a year. So that's really 0.75 of one year. So we're assuming continuous compounding using that, that uh, E function. And now we find that our $100 cash flow that we expect in the future is really worth $97.04 today. And if we want to even take this one step further, remember how I said that this futures contract was on 100 ounces of gold. So this is really the value that we're expecting for one ounce of gold. So now we can multiply this entire thing by 100 ounces, and we're really up about $9,704. And so if we're up $9,704.46, that's the value of this contract, whoever was on the opposite side of the contract, the short position is actually in the negative. So they're down $9,704. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more content just like it. And if you want the file that I created in this video, you can find it available for free on my website using either the link in the description or the pinned comment. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.